last year when I decided to to enter IDA, I only had like one, maybe uh, one month and two weeks to to finish, like three what? routines. What? Yeah, was was really yeah really tight schedule. Yo, but and, like uh, well, you, you just know, you just went and won them. Killer Killer podcast. Killer Killer official dot com. <laughs> Street Culture TV. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Killer Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Killer Podcast, live and direct, central London or central as what? Central as you need to be. Thank you so much for joining us and a big shout out to all the shares and carers. People have been watching and supporting from the jump. Our sponsors, the mighty GK Nifty Heads, have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gkniftyheads.com and get ready for Hoddle Wars Summer 2024. Time for some turntablism right now. We're heading over to Portugal for a champion nonetheless. Four times IDA world champion. Not just in one form, but in tech, in party rocking, you name it. This guy's beat bombing with the beat bombers. Uh, and he goes by the name DJ Ride inside the building. Yes, you yes. Doing? Thank you, man. <laughs> Thank you so much for the for the cool intro. There ain't no smoke without fire around here. You've been killing it for a minute. Uh, thank you, man. We were literally just talking about DMC 2008. <gasps> yeah, exactly. First time I saw you, man. <laughs> yeah, we're getting old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're getting old. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. I was blown away, man. Uh, I loved, uh, like, I loved your showcase, and also I loved the the way you um, you were the host for the all the whole event because it's not easy to to do like uh, you know being like a a good host for a turntablism event mm-hmm. and not mess up the all the DJ's name. Oh, yo. <laughs> and you you were like you were really into it. Oh man, I've been into it for a while. But you're yeah. right. After a couple of drinks, you you got to get those names right. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. For sure. Well, it was was really amazing that night. Yeah, brother, it's it's a pleasure talking to you because um oh, you know you. You, your history speaks volumes, particularly when you're on the the turntables but you're you've been working really hard recently and you've really yeah, built yeah. up you've built up a, a real catalogue of achievements thank you yeah you know at least saying? I try <laughs> <laughs> well yeah. the, the point being is um, turntablism uh, by default you work with your restrictions and sometimes that means eliminating some of the the future forward pieces of tech but nowadays that's really not the case and and what you've managed to do is override that and there's a sense of relevance to what you're bringing to the mm-hmm. scene right now thank you yeah yeah i think my uh one of my highlights is like um i was a producer since day one so my, my goal with the uh, with scratching was like okay i, I want i want to do a little bit of everything and I want to incorporate my production into turntablism mm. and turntablism into my production, my beats. Um, and it's something I, I still, I still love to explore. Even like after 20 years, um, I started like almost 20 years ago. So, and now that I, I'm, I like, I'm, I'm not touring that much like before COVID. So mm. I, I have more time to be in the studio and to product. Uh, to to finish my production and finish my beats so my goal in the last i can say like five years is like to try to release my tracks on good labels outside portugal mm. uh so so i had some some releases on noise label vision um nice. i did um i did an album um where i i can mix uh, where i mix like drum and bass halftime beats and scratching and turntablism I also had uh, stuff on um, Slow Roast uh, on DJ Cray's legendary Ooh, label. Slow Roast, uh, come on, yeah, son. Yeah, I had a collab with, with him. It was really nice, man. Crazy, crazy is the man. Hell and yeah, uh, yeah. also like uh, Sable Valley, Ariel Grime uh, mm-hmm. label. So yeah, it's incredible to see now like people from all over the world playing my, my stuff. You know, I'm still like really underground and, you know, 
I do like bass music, alternative bass music, but you know, I had people from you know Noisia, Craze, Amon Tobin, DJ Shadow playing my shit. So yeah, it was was amazing. And for me it was like a dream like many years ago, having like my my idols uh, playing my stuff mm. or like co- uh, doing collabs with my idols. Like for instance, even Kentaro from Japan. Mad. We did like uh, two two records together and uh, we still wow. do, we are doing music as we speak together. We are finishing some releases. But uh, some years ago, I didn't have the time and also the skill. But now, now I have more time and... Um, I'm uh, I'm improving my skill. I, I I think I have more skill than like ten years ago. <laughs> mm, yeah, so, of course. <laughs> yeah, so so now is the, the time to you know to do these side quests. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I find it really interesting that um, the reapplication of a turntablist mind into production. Yeah. Now I understand that you've been doing production to the same amount time period. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But with with turntablism, um, well, you essentially got the, equi- the the equipment in physical form, and reinterpreting that from it kind of gives you an upper hand as to what that physicality behaves <laughs> like, right? Yeah, yeah. And how to reapply it into production that can then be retransferred live. That's dope. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and also the the way that you know scratch DJs um, do stuff, I think it's another like mindset, you know, because we we sample like like a hip hop rap producer, we 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 sample vinyl, mm. we but I think turntablism guys, turn, turntablism people uh, see the samples in other ways that you know most common producers don't don't see it. Um, mm. So I think we we have another approach to how to use and you know uh, manipulate and trash samples yeah. and, and fuck shit up, you know. So so it's it's nice to to you know to introduce like different ways to to produce. Also, um, th- there's like some tracks um, that that I did on the, my inner album for for Vision. That I I did like the beat first, but then I scratched the the bass and the melody, and I I recorded again, you know, and wow. um, and you know it's something like this style and Ricky Rucker and Mixmaster Mike uh, did, sure. already did, but in bass music I think it's not that common, you know. Uh, so so for me it was was really nice to to do that and to really uh, release it on a, in a big level like like vision uh, where you you know every drum and bass nerds you know <laughs> yeah they 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 are really into vision so it was really nice to to work with them yeah you know what you got me thinking there for a minute because you know you you mentioned the mix master mike who's the OG at this this mashup kind of production quality yeah. he kind of set standards uh, along with the aforementioned um the charm of the charm of the turntablist especially from a live point of view which i still believe is transferable even now is is the idea like you say of like just fucking shit up and yeah <laughs> re- reimagining what people first hear see so you got the the break, you let that go, or a tune, you let that go. But then you you repackage it using the physical skill sets. Um yeah. and that is that can there's loads of tricks that could still make that transition from live to record possible, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. Also, um I, I um I did a track with Kentaro, um, and you know it's we never did a video of that, but mm. um, he did like beat juggling on the track, and it sounds good uh, mm. on the you know if you listen to the track without watching a video because you know beat juggling usually okay you you see you see the DJ doing beat juggling mm. and uh, you know modifying the rhythm and the BPM, but uh, Kentaro did that on a uh, on a production beat and uh, recorded the the beat juggle and. The track is released with the beat juggling part in the end, and it, so it really sounds really nice. And I, 
sometimes I wonder, like, okay, it may be like a people, uh, uh, you know, s someone that uh, it's not into turntablism, but it's like challenging. It's like, okay, this is like a really weird and different rhythm. And mm -hmm. uh, and it works, you know. It's it's challenging. It's not for everyone, <laughs> no. for everybody, you know. But uh, uh, it's not for everybody. But it's it's challenging. It and I think, you know, um, there's. Uh, I I hope more people can can do that. Incorporate sc more scratching and turntablism into different genres, you know. Like I, I'm doing yeah. right now with uh, with bass music. Not not just hip hop. Actually, in hip hop right now, it's kind of rare. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> the, like hip hop records with with scratching is is rare right now, unfortunately. But you know, it is what it is. Now, like rock music goes through the same phase. You know, yeah. solo guitars. Like, do you want a mid late of that? You know, like there is these trends that go in and out, but they always come back to the source eventually. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, the the idea that that comes to mind is like this uh, for the record is example A being the tune and like what Kentaro did at the end, example B is the the act of performing what yeah. you've produced. That is such an entertaining idea, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. Yeah, and, oh, and, um, yeah and again, with, with, um, I'm, uh, I'm going to talk again about Enro, my, my album, Mm, one of go, my go, last go. albums um, I did in um, you know during during the lockdown and uh, you know I've spent maybe like one year on that on that record mm. but then like every every club and you know venue was was closed it was like 2021 here here in Portugal everything was closed at the time yeah. but I, I really wanted to perform it you know <laughs> like you said one thing is like produ production or like a dj battle or doing a beat juggle um it's what you do in the studio but i i really wanted to perform it live and uh you know i rented at the time i i spoke with a friend that does like really good videos and uh we rented the space and uh, you know i i performed the album uh so and the, we we recorded it by video you know because nice. it's such an important thing for me like because yeah. you know i'm a product i'm a producer but i'm a i'm a scratch guy so if if i can't pr uh perform what i do in the studio it's you know <laughs> it's irrelevant it's, yeah it's not worth it you know the fun the fun is like both things um yeah. production and and scratching and producing so yeah, that that was like a, a, a cool thing that we we did. You know, uh, I released the album in a really bad timing. You know, everything was closed, but uh, I was I was thinking, no man, I need to play this. Yeah, you gotta uh, go out, get it out there, man. Yeah, I'm gonna play this just for me and my friend. You know, <laughs> but mm -hmm. we we recorded, we did like a live stream, and it was nice. The the video is, is still really dope, and. Um, it, you know, it was like like you said, like it's really important to, and it's it's two two different leagues. Uh, what you do in the studio, and then having the skill and the ability to to do it live, you know, it's totally different. Yeah, do you think that's do you think that's overlooked by the the wider population of of DJs, age ranges, and and genres? Do you know is is this is this a kind of call to arms? Really, when when you think about how much energy time and effort that you put into creating the music and then to actually do something on the turntables i mean i'm not judging anyone oh yeah listen peace, yeah. peace you know uh, but, <laughs> but on my heart goes towards the well where's the skills show us what you got you know yeah 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 man um, i miss you know sometimes i i want to see more skills you know and um uh, right now we you know tiktok and instagram videos that i think most people go with the easy way, mm. just you know, playing a tune and doing a mashup, and uh, more like you know, being like open format DJ and the turntablism side of our culture uh, mm. is not that maybe that uh, strong right now in mm. terms of you know um, views and visibility. I think 
and and I think it's also because I can understand like lot more most of people are like really busy with their lives and trying to hustle. Yeah. You know, and it's it's like it's easier to get gigs, maybe just presenting something easy, mm. like a mashup or a DJ thing, or you know, oh these two like doing something with uh, two or three hits yeah. that uh, two or three TikTok hits, you know. <laughs> and it's it's way more difficult uh doing like a scratch routine. So I can understand of course, but my you know my hardcore scratching um uh guy inside me <laughs> you know i i really like i really like to see like more worse more, more skills can you imagine like a Nicki minaj or drake or i don't know cardi b or something like that suddenly bringing out their dj that, that has that skill and like you have that window of time to showcase that'd be crazy yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. like like uh, like uh maybe the last the last um uh, big name that did that maybe it was like maybe Kanye with a track definitely I don't know yeah uh, okay you have run the jewels but mm. but the uh, run the jewels DJ I don't know I don't think he d- does like routines yeah um so maybe and I remember a track did routines in the middle of the gig crazy uh yeah of course, like mix master mind with the Beastie Boys, but that was like uh, before that, I think. Mm-hmm. Who, but, does, yeah. who does who does DJ Clever DJ for? I forget his name. Oh yeah, Yellow he does, Wolf. No, the Yellow Wolf. That's it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. He, they, they're still out doing stuff, but they they really flipped it. That they, they, they killed it. The concept yeah, yeah, and the brand. Sure. Woo. Yeah. Of course, like there, there's like small small gigs like more underground art- artists that have still have that mm. i'm i'm pretty sure but you know mainstream artists they right now they hide the dj you know yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, even even some people hide the band <laughs> they don't perform with the band on, on the on the stage it's, it's people great, hide, you know? some people hide the instrumental tracks that's the exactly idea. exactly <laughs> Let's take it back. Let's take it back to uh, where you first began. Who were your influences? What, you know, what, who are the kind of people that you were inspired by? Yeah. So for me, like one of the like you know life changing moments for me was the first time I I heard uh, Intergalactic, and I was like thirteen at the time, mm. and uh, it was really nice because they they played here in Portugal on the national radio. Uh, so Beastie Boys Intergalactic was was playing and uh, I was with some friends and I was blown away you know mm. um, it it was like it's still a really f- futuristic track you know with the vocoder and the robotics sounds and mm. the, the 808s and uh, for me it was game, game, uh, life changing because I, I really wanted to to search to you know to get more music like that and, mm. and I for me, it was the ideal world, like the ideal mix, the perfect mix, like hip hop yeah. and electronic, you know. Good and, uh, yeah, man, it was was crazy. So mm. mix master mic for me was like one of the my my biggest influences. You know, DJ Crane, um, Kintaro, uh, even uh, you know uh, these styles, of course. These styles is the, the of scratching. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> Dave. Gee. Dave is the man. Yep. Um, and also like even like DJ Woody, Ricky Rucker, um mm-hmm. Rafik, and yeah. Cuts. And Cuts was mm-hmm. was amazing. Man. It's and, guy, and Cuts, it's one of the goats. Uh, I'm really sad like the guy disappeared. I hope he's doing well. So yeah. but uh, but yeah, he his routines are you know are legendary. Yeah, yeah. Some some people just cut through and I'm, I'm almost certain it's the timings in which they join they, you know they get on the battle but you can yeah. there's, there's a source there's a there's a funk and an energy to these people you yeah, mentioned. yeah you you remember like even i merged i merged was like oh amazing. my god he went, yeah, yeah, yeah of course yeah <laughs> wow I, I merged, it was like similar kind of similar to, to one cut because they won everything Mm. And then they they kind of disappeared. They did like one or two things, and 
you know i th- mm. i think maybe uncut i i heard some stories that he's he tried to do some club gigs and uh he was like okay this is not for me you know yeah 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 <laughs> something just, interesting just, like, about that yeah i'm just like a scratch guy you and, know who uh, also used know, to kill it though you know who also used to kill it do you remember Lil jazz from canada uh who Lil jazz from canada Lil- Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, from Toronto. He was actually Nella okay. Furtado's um, uh, boyfriend. I think they got a kid together. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, okay. Check out Lil Nelly, Jazz. Nelly Furtado is it's Portuguese. Half Portuguese. Yo, yeah. really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> she, That's where she gets from, the looks uh, from. Yeah, she's from uh, Azores Island. Yeah. No it's way. Crazy. That is yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah <laughs> sometimes she, she's here. But... My my brother met met her like last year here in Lisbon. Yeah, yeah. She, <laughs> she was a hip hop head. She was a hip hop head first. Yeah, yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. Um, so all these people combined, you kind of came in. I mean, this isn't intentionally spicy. I think there are some facts within it. That, you know, uh, the attendees don't lie. Um, there was. Scratch DJing had a real time in the sun between 2000 and, well, 1999 and 2011 at least. Yeah, yeah. You, you kind of captured that, you know, that sun in 2007, 2008 and being involved in the scene. Would, would I be right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it was like the golden era for me and many people. It's, you know, when Craze won... Even mm-hmm. like DJ Fly, I merged Rafik. Mm-hmm. Raf- Rafik was was amazing. His run was incredible. Mm-hmm. And also DJ Rafik for me and many people did the best Red Bull three style uh, set ever. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> yeah, yeah but but bells. but he 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 didn't go to the finals. Yeah, because he he did like the you know the German uh, finals. Yeah, and uh, he he got some problems uh, uh, with that set, some tech- technical problems. So I think who who got to the world finals, I think was Prozyko. Mm, okay. You, yeah. So so mm. Ra- Rafik didn't did win to the to the world finals, but uh, he posted the the set without technical problems, and you can watch it. And you know, for me, it's like, yeah, probably the best. Red Bull three style set ever, you know the tone playing, the skill, the you know all the creativity. Um, it was amazing. But back to to your uh, to your question, yeah, I think like you know, re- yeah that 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 time period with you know Kintaro, uh, Fly, mm. All the Gods, I merge, mm. yeah, and then then you have. After that was was kind of difficult, you know, because even you know turntablism was not that cool anymore. I think. Why or, do you think that you know, was? Why do you think that was though? Right? What 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 what, what do you think, think contributed to that? Yeah, I think it was like a shift in the culture. Also, like even even rappers didn't didn't uh, needed like DJs anymore, you know. Hmm. And uh, and maybe maybe what uh, was our fault, uh, not you know, uh, how can I say, uh, not presenting maybe or not trying to develop or pushing scratch to the mainstream mm. uh, in the in the pleasant or in the in a way that uh, you know mo- most people can can. Uh, watch it and understand it, you know. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I think if I think it is what it is. Like peop, um, some some stuff, you know, have a peak and then go on the ground again, and maybe mm. maybe in some years, uh, turntable is uh, shines again, you know. And the yeah, for for me, like the community is is still like I I I watch like. Young kids scratching and I'm blown away you know, all, every all time. day, bro. All yeah, yeah. day. So I'm not saying I'm not. Some people say, "Ah, turntable is now sucks." No, bro. Turntable is like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it's still, it's still, you know, 
really high level. Many people do like amazing routines. But yeah. the thing is, the thing now is you you are you have so many stuff going on. Uh, mm. So you have to dig really deep to see like quality stuff. Because if yeah. you if you open like Instagram, you you have like okay the open format DJs, the mashup people, mm. the techno guys, the viral clips. So where are the good scratch DJs and turntable guys doing good routines? You have to dig deeper, you know, because mm. our videos don't don't get like hundreds of thousands of views, you know. <laughs> no, 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 I'm you with know? you. So yeah, that there's still like amazing people and amazing stats uh but but you have to you know make a, a huge effort to to search for it 100% and i just just to echo what you're saying and and perhaps embellish a little bit more on what i meant um i think there there was a moment in time which was almost like the door blew open to the possibilities and like you say, you've got to dig deeper now. I mean, there's yeah. the legends as, as active as ever. Beat Junkies, Jazzy Jeff. Yeah, for sure. Like really. Yourself and Craze. And Scratch Bastard. Yeah. Scratch Bastard, Mr. Switch. I mean, the, the, yeah. the list goes on, right? Um, I've got to pick up DJ Prime Cuts as well because that's my guy. Um, but um, I think I think what we can conclude is that there isn't a place like what you would have with ITF or Goldie Awards or Red Bull or DMC. Yeah. There's no, there's no identifiable, vi- um, mo- visible moments where an iconic thing happens that completely inspires all generation because it's just not like that in the current landscape, is it? Yeah, uh, you know, it's it's still a niche thing. It's mm. still, you know, even. I, I don't remember what was the last uh, DJ Craze routine, maybe last year or two years ago. Yeah, another one, of, crazy. Of, yeah, of, of course, like, that's another milestone, but yeah. it's still niche, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So so it, it doesn't get, like, to to the mainstream, perhaps, you know? Craze is an amazing case study because... Um... Yeah, man, he's still... <laughs> He's done it so all. relevant, you know. He still, it, people, people still say that okay, if Craze enters the MC again or any other competition, he will win again, you know. <laughs> wow. he just thinks yeah. differently. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, I think I think he skills. He still practices a lot, and he still have like lots of good ideas. Mm. So he still, you know, he still he his prime, you know. How how many ideas do you have? Let's, for argument's sake, say in a week. Like, do you just wake yeah. up and have to write shit down because you've got a great idea? <laughs> yeah, it depends. Right now, I have like maybe I'm trying to to finish like three, four good ideas. But uh, you know, depends on the on the time. Um, you know, in in, in the uh, scratch routines, right? Mm. Because beats, I can do beats like every day. Like I can do like three, four beats per day. Wow. It's it's all good. If I if I if I have a good sample, or if I have like you know a good flow, I can I can do like lots of beats. But wow. you know, scratch routines is completely different. Um, I can do a nice routine, maybe once per month, hmm. if if I put the time. On it, yeah. But the the last year when I decided to to enter IDA, I only had like one, maybe uh, one month and two weeks to to finish like three what? routines. What? Yeah, was was really yeah really tight schedule. Yo, but and, like uh, well, you, you just know, you just went and won them. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Because I I try to recycle uh, old ideas, you know. And um, and put put something you know fresh uh, on them. So yeah, you know, in the in one month you can do a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, well you can win a lot. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because you know the the party rocking thing 
Yeah. I I did all the sets in like one month, but I I also recycled some some ideas. Yeah. Uh, I I put some ideas from the three style. Um, I entered three style in the the last time was 2019 in Taiwan. Uh, so yeah, it was amazing. Uh, it was wow. was really nice. So I recycled. It was the the last uh, Red Bull three style ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, they they stopped yeah. it after that, right? Yeah, yeah. So I recycled some some of my three style ideas to the IDA party rocking uh, new new show. And then the technical category was was also I did five sets and the two the two of them are, are brand new. Mm. And the other three is like recycle ideas from the past. Uh, but yeah, was everything in a, almost two months was was crazy. I was getting to bed like at nine nine a.m. You know. <laughs> yeah, but that's the first thing I thought. I was like, because it's not just like. Coming up with okay, so you you're reinventing certain previous um, sets that you've done before, but yeah, yeah, there still is a level of it's not just the musical choice; it's also the technicality of right. How do I get that over to there? Yeah, yeah, I, of course, dude. That, that that's that sleepless nights in my book. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, yeah. It was but you know for me it was like a challenge, and uh, also. For me, was I decided to go because um, you know I thought a really small chance of winning like two two titles in like two months, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know. so it was like for me it was like, okay, maybe maybe I can do it. Let's try. And it was an inspiration ultra, um, and uh, and yeah, it was it was worth it in the end. But it was was crazy. Uh, <laughs> crazy tiring, you know. <laughs> Bro, when you see your videos online, when you see your Instagram, the energy you emit when Thank you're you. performing yeah. is crazy. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of takes me back to, yeah, it takes me back to the allies. No, crazy. Man. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah, man. Like DJ Develop, you know what I mean? Like, was it developed? Yeah, it was developed. And then it was uh, infamous and these guys, they all hold, it was almost like a, an angst of like wanting to just push the dial and really throw your muscle at it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't happen a lot, does it? Yeah, that, that drive and the, that energy, you know, because some some people have good ideas, but then in the stage, they don't have the the right energy or drive or attitude, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, and and the turntablism lives also from from that energy. Mm-hmm. If you, you can have like a really good idea and a good routine, but if you are on the stage performing and you know you are just you, you are you are not just uh, you are not feeling it, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. It does. It does go to the to the to the crowd. It don't connect to the crowd. And I try because you know I have I have lots of experience playing, and that's like one of my main things. Try to to have the the proper energy and you know always smile and look look in the front, look to the crowd. Mm-hmm. You no, know, try to interact, not in the cheesy way. Like just you know just a small. <laughs> Per- per- performance, thing, man. Know. It's a performance. Yeah, performance. Yeah, because you know, even in the last IDA, um, in the World Finals in Poland, there was like some. Even the 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 guy that went with me in the final, uh, uh, DJ uh, Noli from Japan, mm-hmm. the guy was amazing. But he was so tired, and mm. and uh, he 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 did in the in the end. I, I I think he didn't connect that much with the with the crowd, you know. And he was like, some people were nervous, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, the, and the the judges and the 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 audience, you know, every everyone can notice that. So even if I'm nervous, I try to you know, try to appear relaxed, <laughs> and that yeah. that really helps, you know. You know, um, one of the more upfront obstacles 
particularly with a performance value that yourself and a handful of others, these lone stars of the DJ world, you know, they, a lot of them, a lot of them have gone to mega success, like, you know, the Jersey yeah. Jeffs of the world and, um, yeah, of course. uh, cash money and, you know, just iconic grandmaster flash and people like that. Yeah. Where they get this set up ready for them, but in many cases, I don't think the clubs are ready for the turntablism and scratching, right? I don't think they're ready. In the clubs? Yeah, they, they kind of just, you know, here's your CDJs, here's your Pioneer, mix the gear on with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah ain't ready the, for, they ain't ready for the tech, right? Yeah, it depends, depends on the, the kind of event, I think. Yeah, perhaps uh, in the case of IDA, which obviously is a coveted, coveted event. Yeah, yeah. I, uh-huh. idea is incredible because they 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 do every world final in the theater. Mm. So the crowd, the crowd is the everyone is you know it's it's seated. It's, it's like a like a cinema, um, and uh, you know you are you are there like watching a, a turntablism a world championship, but. You are in your chair, just relaxed, and you know, like watching a movie. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's so real. Cool. I love that. Yeah, it's, idea. it's it's the the perfect uh, venue for for that. You know. Again, I think you, you got me inspired again because actually, you know what? That's the right way to go about it. It's not a yeah. club. Don't put it in a club. Put it in a place where people can observe, yeah. like a like a like also, classical music. Yeah. Also, like. For my experience, three style was a really good format for the club. was was an amazing format for the club because mm. three style was the perfect crossover yeah. between you know scratching and the open format and more commercial stuff. Yeah, and yep. Um, I was I, in Taiwan was was amazing and I was also entered in two thousand and fifteen in Japan, and Japan was also like. From small clubs to to big clubs to really big venues, mm. and uh, you know every everyone every venue was packed, uh, was sold out, and uh, you know I think that format was was really nice, and I'm uh, I'm happy to see like IDA having this new category, the the party rocker, and also the MC, uh, they they have a new a new category. Uh, I think it's called Open. Wow. Yeah, you, you didn't know, knew about that? No, so what, they got the mics yeah. open, now they're in trouble. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they have, a, they have a new show as well. So wow. it's an open format, format thing. And, uh, you know, it's, it was like a funny timing because I did that uh, some months ago. But I also, it's a natural thing, you know, uh, the, the scratch uh, championships, like, adapting and uh, evolving and also it's sad because i think three style uh lived like uh you know a gap in yeah. the in our Agreed. culture yeah even if even if it was like a, a big brand behind that but three style was what we we had like a huge community working for you know all the tone playing and the three mm. mixing stuff and um everyone was like working hard to, to do some good videos. And uh, with yeah. the end of, of Three Style, uh, I think it was like a gap uh, to, you know, IDA and all the MC, they, they are going to, to fill that gap and it's nice for the culture. I agree. There was something about the freestyle where, like you said, it was just smooth so far as production value of a night. Yeah. Um, there was no, you know, technical problems. It was always sorted. And then there was this policy of music that really transferred across every genre. It was so sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was really nice. I, I had amazing nights. Also in the, in the, uh, the World Finals in Japan, mm-hmm. I saw I saw this style, Shortcut, Kentaro and New Mark performing at that night it was was amazing. Yeah. Oh, yo! I think I've seen um, uh, clips of this. Yeah, craze. Yeah, yeah, you know, was amazing. Everyone was everyone was there. Yeah, it was it was crazy. Yeah, the, man. See that that's what I'm talking about. Moments. Red, you Red know? Bull Red Bull Money was was being like 
really well spent, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, good money. <laughs> At the time, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel you, I feel you. For sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, and in this age of, uh, you know, graffiti going global, uh, particularly with the Beyond the Streets project that's going around, fly circusing around the world, and then you've got breakdancing going to the Olympics. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's... It's amazing. Yeah, and there's loads of opportunities there. I think it's just, again, re-establishing that calibre again back into the public eye. And, and you, yeah. you know, it's... I don't think it's an if, it's when. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And also, when you think about how you got into it, which was a Beastie Boys song. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have to come through the playing, convention. Playing on the national radio in Do you Portugal. get what I'm saying? It doesn't have to be... A, yeah, that, that in itself is a, a very unique situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, you, you, you find your entry holes into the culture. So it doesn't have to be like, oh, we must bring back a certain club or a certain event. It's, it's just figuring out a different route in, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think one one of our main you know goals um, and uh, we have to to keep you know doing good videos and I had I had the word content but you know it's content we 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 need to you know sometimes it's it's difficult to to put like or to record or, or you know. For me, also for me, is like uh, I try to to put like to do like really high good quality videos. So mm. it's also investment because I, I have to you know to to pay you know the the video editor the yeah all the all that stuff. But in the in the end, is is worth it. And um, and the so, sometimes you know not not with the, every video, but. Some videos I feel that you know the message is there and people can that video can inspire like a young kid or you know someone from a different genre, yeah. a music genre. And um, for me, it's like one of my goals right now is to do like good videos to to present my my art. And yeah. um, because you know everyone is doing that, but some most of the time not in. Uh, like the a way that I I can connect with, you know. It's what you mostly... mean? No, 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 no. What you mean is not a lot of people have the talent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> also that. Just say that also is that, baby. <laughs> <laughs> also that, man. You know, I I don't I don't have nothing against you know the TikTok videos and the techno techno guys just mm. pressing a button, but. You know, I like to to see stuff more challenging. Um, mm. You know, that can can make me thinking. You know, like mm. that can inspire me. And sometimes it's just a video for the video. You know, you have like hot girls there dancing, blah blah blah. It's just mm. it's just the algorithm working. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just yeah, like yeah. it's it's just like fast food. You know, uh, yeah, some yeah. some of those videos is just fast food, and you know. Um, it's it's like stop sometimes also some some of the videos right now are kind of like soft form you know because they they have like music and the or techno or house or whatever yeah, but yeah, yeah. the camera focus only on hot girls yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's like bro so this is just about the music or it's about you know <laughs> the, the live yeah. the the visual thing the lifestyle know? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny, so, it's funny how that know. still applies even in 2024, wherever you watch it. No, it's it's the yeah, fucking yeah. algorithm, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They fuck it with works. You. It, it's the feedback loop. Yes, that's right. Correct. But with with a name, you know, the Beat Bombers. I mean, who like that name alone? I'm just like, yeah. yeah. Where are we <laughs> where are we all pointing these bombs? Let's go. You know. What I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Beat Bombers. It, yeah. 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 My crew, <laughs> yeah, bruv, absolutely. I mean, I want to come to a show, never mind the videos. Yeah. I, I, I want to see the beat bombers. Let's go, yeah. you know, uh, that's thanks, a great man. name. Man. <laughs> These yeah, inspiring things, man, so sick. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, man, beat bombers. We we have the crew for yeah, almost maybe like eight, 17, 18 years or something. Crazy. Yeah, I met 
I met uh, Stereosauro when I was really young, and we are from the, the same city. Yeah. Now I live in Lisbon, but my, my hometown uh, is one hour from uh, Lisbon. Uh, gotcha. It's called the Caldas da Rainha, and the okay. Stereosauro still, still lives there. It's a lovely city. And uh, yeah, we met there, and uh, it, we were the only people in the city scratching, you know, and uh, playing mm. hip hop <laughs> at the time. Wow. So, so it was really good to to know and to have someone that I can share music and uh, practice and do mm. jams. Uh, so we started doing uh, jams together and playing, and then we did some albums. Albums we we enter also uh, idea the the show category. We won uh, two times, and we also um, went to the MC. I think it was two thousand and ten. We placed like. Uh, Third or yeah, your you beat bombers. Your yeah. names have been about for a while, bro. Like I'm, I'm yeah, yeah. Games back in the day. Yeah, but but then you know, um, we wanted to to go uh, again to the MC, but uh, in Portugal we don't have the MC. Uh, mm. uh, from the last the MC we had was like 2010. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we then after some years we we tried to apply for the online team. As, uh, because the MC had like uh, uh, the online team category. That's right. But I remember we we lost, we placed second, we lost to Fly and the Tick, you know. Oh, <laughs> yeah, and, you know. <laughs> what what can you what can yeah. you say? Then what can you do, man? <laughs> that Tick and Fly was was good. Yeah, yeah. And, that's and the sick. other year we we also placed second to Vect and uh, Brace. Really? Yeah. They, they enter the enter also team, yeah. At so the just time. bad timing, so, just bad. Yeah, timing. bad timing. We we could have like uh, when when the NC title, but yeah, bad timing. <laughs> but sometimes, but but sometimes, playing that underdog, you, you it's the it's the strongest position you could play, right? So yeah, and now the relevance of the name it holds weight in this new age. As a, you know what I mean? Like as a brand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because no one else has got that. There's not many names out there that also have the historical documentation, but but can actually walk it how they talk it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I feel you. Yeah, it was also, you know, I can I can talk about the this this I, the last idea it was mm. really funny because um you know, I was really chill. I was like, you know, I'm here just to have fun and to, you know, to try my, my new routine. Mm. But there was like, I didn't felt pressure, but there was like some DJs that came 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 up with, uh, to me like, bro, when I saw your name that you, you were entering, you know, <laughs> wow. I was like, oh, fuck. And I was like, oh, for real? Because, you know, I don't, I don't feel that. But of course that, People, people that know my work know my work, and uh, it was also funny to see, um, and you know, really, really good for me uh, to see people that uh, they're in Poland that mm. know my my music. They they knew my music and they prefer my productions That's very to cool. the scratch side. You know, was wow. was really interesting to see that mm. there was like a guy. Uh, in the end, he he was uh, already drunk, so so it was being more honest. <laughs> he was like, "Bro, I, I really like you as a DJ and the scratch guy, but you know, for me, I I, I prefer your production uh, because you know I'm a producer also. So it was really nice because oh. uh, I noticed that okay, uh, this guy is a producer, so he doesn't connect as much with my turntablism yeah. uh, side, but he connects with me." the with, with my beats you know with yeah. my releases and my placements so uh it was really nice to see that also uh you know uh, the last time i went to uh third time the event was before covid so in mm. these four years you know many m- many things changed and uh, yeah I, I really missed you know being with the with the with the people being with the community and uh, you know, we, the scratch scratch people are the best people, man. <laughs> wow, they're the best they're, people ever. They're the most humblest and coolest guys behind the scenes, yeah, behind, yeah. The, behind the curtain. You know, they're yeah, attacking, yeah. they're attacking the stage. But when they're behind the curtain, yeah, yeah, the for most, sure. 
They're the best, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> Without question. Um, what's the future, my brother? What's the future for DJ Ride? Yeah. Uh, so right now I'm um, I'm finishing some some stuff. Uh, like we spoke, I I, I have some stuff with uh, DJ Kentaro. Um, I'm uh, finishing new routines. I don't know if I'm I'm gonna enter uh, this year, uh, like the MC or IDA. IDA, I'm not gonna defend because I want to, you know, uh, be chill. I I want to be a judge this year. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> it's time like, to get really right, judge. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but the MC, the MC, I'm still thinking. Um, mm. I'm I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm I'm gonna send some uh, some videos because because we you can apply online. That's uh, it. So yeah, I'm still trying to figure out. But yeah, other than that, uh, I have like many many ideas when I I can show you like this, this is like the a list a list of videos I I have to, wow. to record. You know. So here I have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, ten, ten videos on the hold that I'm trying to find like a a good location, and uh, I'm I'm finishing the the routines. You know, yeah. small routines, just just the uh, one minute uh, videos for for my uh, social media. And yeah, uh, yeah I'm, I'm I'm finishing. Uh, more more music. I have an EP coming up in September. Nice and uh, other stuff. So so yeah, never wow. never stop. But yeah, I mean the great thing about the short form videos is collectively that makes up a whole routine in itself. Yeah and yeah for sure for so sure. Sick. And the my thing is uh, I uh, I call them um, this this is like a project for me. So it's it's a scratch location nice. uh, project. Nice. Uh, because you know, uh, I can go to the middle of nowhere and uh, I can record the video. And for me, sometimes I try to get inspiration for from that location. Uh, mm. For instance, the other day uh, we were uh, recording on the abandoned uh, train station, Sick. and uh, and we my 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 video guy he he saw like uh, actually a train. Uh, abandoned a train there in the in really bad shape. Also, I I, I fell off and uh, you know I I did the routine. I did the video with some blood on the head. <laughs> oh no, you ain't rock star on them. Listen, don't be yeah, don't be falling from breaking those hands. Damn. Yeah, <laughs> was was really was was uh, really bad. But uh, but we still recorded and um, this specific thing. Uh, I got like inspiration from the. From the location, you know, yeah. and uh, I did like a freestyle uh, thing because I, I was not supposed to record inside the the, the train, but uh, it was really nice. So this project, mm. were, uh, it's called Scratch Location, and it, it's something I really want to explore more. I already did uh, in uh, in crazy uh, uh, in crazy places like uh, my my favorite so far. I think it's like in a in the cathedral, in the big cathedral, in the here in, in the Portugal, is like wow. in Alcubaça, and we we had to we spent like almost one year trying to get the permits to record this. You know, but she yes. ain't easy. But for me, is my 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 favorite so far, and uh, it was really difficult to record there. But but yeah, you you know even my parents can see that video and can enjoy it, even if it's like a scratch routine, you know. And that's my goal with uh, with these videos. Like it's like everyone can enjoy, it, even if they are not into turntablism, you know. Yeah, oh, I feel that. M Mum and dad's always the great meter for that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> they like it. Everyone's a winner. Yeah. My brother, well, for more sure. more prosperity to you. And keep oh, on man, being Oh, thank you. For you too, man. Yeah. We have to, to do a track together one of these days, man. I'm in. Yeah. I'm in, yes. 100%. <laughs> I'll send you some bits. Let's do yeah, 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 that's man, done. For sure. Let's, that, <laughs> let's just make that happen ASAP. I'm all over it. I love that idea. For sure, man. For sure. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast outlay was out of fashion. You know what I mean? Uh, skills to the highest degree. 
Um, I don't say so, DJ Ride tells you so. Make sure you go and check out all of his Instagrams and um, social media handles without question. Beat bombing all over the place. Yes, yes. <laughs> now, like, it was out of fashion, all right? Don't talk to anyone, I wouldn't. You stay lucky. Take care of yourselves. Nice one, Ride. See you next time, man. Thanks for having me. <laughs> See you. Peace. Yeah.